Okay, so uh, uh, I was asked to talk about the TMD's uh, overview and in particular what can, can be done in the ENC. And uh, I think uh, you may already saw this uh, many times. And I, I, in my view, the TMD is really kind of unifying picture of universal language in small X and hydraulic physics community. And this is how you do the evolution, uh, you know, like small, small X, like large, large Q score. And, uh, uh, and if you have saturation physics, you will definitely see some uh, uh, peak around saturation scale for the transfer of momentum and power of scale chain. And if you just uh, uh, focus on the TMD part, uh, uh, you'll have Q score dependent. So every physics actually uh, uh, connected in this TMD business. So I, I will actually also try to convince you that TMD is very important to go forward. <clears throat> so I prepare my talk, actually, I have to look back on what I have been, what I talked about the very early time when I was uh, getting into small X physics. So this is a comment from on my 2009 talk, I think also I hear at the INT program. So what I commented at that time that actually, if we study TMD physics, uh, we don't lose uh, sensitivity, to, sensitivity to saturation physics, even with high Q score, uh, which I think, I think was uh, somehow misunderstood. Uh, many people say that if you want to study saturation physics, you have to probe the process with half scale around saturation scale. But I will show you that actually you don't. So even with large Q score, for the hard process like Oopson production. But if you look at no chance of the moment, the TMD physics, you, you can still prove the saturation physics. You don't lose the sensitivity. And uh, of course, I, uh, I also realized at that time you can get direct probe with the transform dependence models. Of course, at that time, I didn't know how you do the young leading order calculation. And, uh, but I, I did realize this will be additional sort of ground resummation and so on. But that, at that time, 2009, I actually had no idea how the sort of ground resummation would get to. I mean, at that time, I think um, <coughs> Bowen and Al and myself for <coughs> a couple of years trying to figure out how this PK evolution and uh, pseudocode resummation actually can be done systematically in this framework. I think it's a, uh, it's, uh, it, 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 it I think I, I'm happy to report that actually all the security issues have been resolved. Uh, <coughs> since I was asked to give an overview, but I don't think I have time to really go through all recent developments. I just show you some of the uh, recent, uh, very exciting uh, developments in the small X physics. First of all, this, uh, if you try to study spin dependence for the TMD and small X, it's very unpredictable. And, uh, but, but at the same time, I found a very beautiful paper by, by Daniel and Jen Joe and Pete and, uh, and, 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 and others. They are trying to relate, in particular, transfer spin dependent uh, power and uh, related to that, to the spin dependent order. So that's a very beautiful paper. It's very nice, exciting. And uh, I think Daniel will be here in a couple of weeks. I, I believe he will talk about this. And uh, another very tough and very complicated calculation by our uh, uh, organizer is really try to study the holistic distribution. I think they're still doing that. And, uh, I, 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 I didn't need a bit of exercise around that line too, but it's very, very tough calculation. But, but they have been uh, getting very, very interesting results for the small X behavior for the holistic distribution and so on. I think at some stage you already will talk about it, or maybe you already talked about it. Okay, so they, Yan and uh, Andrew at uh, same time, um, they are trying to look for some really power correction in the in the small X and also in the EMD context. It's very interesting actually. Some of the results relate to the uh, <coughs> very hot topic in soft community factor as well. So when they try to look for, for example, a TMD calculation, there's a potential important contribution from power correct, which is actually a very important role, for example, in the hard process that they're 
involve jet production or Higgs particle production and so on. So that's very interesting stuff. And today I, I will talk a little bit on the pseudocouple summation. That's really, and this give me confidence that I know I'm more confident I'll talk to you about the Green small X and then that uh, a couple years ago. So I, I will give you some introduction and then I will uh, lay some uh, theoretical developments around the evolution and then I will talk about the phenomenology and what the ESA can bring us. So I all want to start with Kanye Super 1981 when they wrote down the ground description of TMD ground, they turn TMD ground description. So they define the ground description in terms of the first stranger, of course, and the sandwich with uh, gauge of, the, of course, you know that a, a, gauge, a gauge field is a joint representation. Of course, the gauge link is in the joint representation as well. So in, in their mind, the ground description only have one, so that's defined this way. So the gauge link is a joint representation. And the gauge link, of course, goes to either plus infinity or back to infinity, and then connect uh, these two fields. <coughs> so from that definition, you can immediately say that we do have physical interpretation for this ground description. If you choose a Nikon gauge with certain boundary condition, for example, if I choose a probe at the a plus infinity equals zero, so actually you can get rid of the gauge link in this. So well, what happens if you don't have gauge link contribution, then you, you do have longer density interpretation. Because basically you can write down the field as a, a creation and addition of it. Sorry, it's kind of tangential, but uh, I think the proper subgauge condition is delta A. Delta dot A curve, so the transfer divergence is zero. But that's a whole separate discussion. We wrote the whole paper with Giovanni, um, and a student of mine on it. But if you, so if you try to, I think it, it's equivalent. I think we have that as well. We see in the in the gauge for the kind of fitting school gauge. So you basically touch your. So I was confused about this because you think about the gauge uh, field of plus infinity. It's a pure gauge. Yeah. So it's that's what I mean. It's you value back. No, that's but but, but from it, it depends. You can choose it, you know, to be either zero or if there's a discontinuity at x minus equal to zero. The statement is that you cannot. Yeah. So at one infinity, right? So it's, you're saying you you value your dagger, um, and then you can choose it to be zero or a, a, a right. sine function. Uh, that is not always not possible beyond. Um, so the statement that the proper subgauge condition is delta of a curve. A curve is two components. So let's do two conditions. And that's one too many. Um, we need a delta. I mean, it's not going to change anything in saying what you say. But, but the thing that we talk about that in our paper, we say that <coughs> you can choose in such a way that people have all the components that they are That is probably true, yeah. but we <laughs> have to. Uh, but oh, you don't have to. Actually, what, what do you say is right in the sense because you have gauge link. Here is actually you can go whatever path you want to do. gauge. That's part of the reason. That, that is true. <coughs> if you want to use PD, for instance, where you're right. Oh, you can do that. Then you cannot say it's a curve at one infinity plus a curve. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, it's yeah. strongly related to your, your <coughs> no, but, but description. You, you can yeah. fix it. You can fix PD <coughs> by saying del dot a oh, at one That could be. So, like so I think a proper gauge condition that even it, other it, gauges it, just it, build it, up. In the sense, actually, the, the, the principal value prescription is not really physical. If you just choose the next one, you say a for plus and a plus a for minus a for zero. I mean, only how it just doesn't exist. We, we came up with an example where you cannot satisfy the gauge condition. Yeah. But if you weaken it to make it delta, then you can then you can follow that's, that's, But that's, I think that's, that's also good. proper for, for your question. But okay, let's take it offline. Yeah, so anyway, so in this case, you, you can drop off the gauge link, then you have number density. Basically, you say I can write down the parent string and the wave function score of the, of the, of the neurons in the, in the new camp. That's why Sam always proposed to do that, but he never did. But anyway, this has been done. 
Raju and uh, and Larry many years ago, and also here in Laos, acted as one of the scripts as a function, as we function in the account, and the character that so-called weather, weather winning from the scripture, right? So it's a uh, it's particular very interesting uh, uh, with a uh, solution for the wave function yeah, part of the solution and ground solution. Actually, this this we have a saturation built in there, and of course we can also reproduce the ground spinning by using the definition of the current super uh, uh, in nineteen eighty one. So in a sense that what Nary and Raju talked in many years ago is that the so-called weather wind ground speed is actually conventional ground distribution uh, defined by conic super many years ago. Uh, <coughs> so the beauty of the, the TMD ground distribution <coughs> is the following. I don't have to spend too much time on this side, but uh, I just mentioned that it, if the saturation scale in the perturbative regime, you actually know majority of the ground distribution just just look at kinematics because you can calculate this part. And then you, most importantly, the evolution is controlled by the teamwork of BK equation, which gives you a small axis evolution. So in the smaller, smaller axis, front of the KD description will push forward in a larger, larger tensile region. So actually, we know how to do the physics here. I think this product is particularly from Yuri. And uh, that's the beauty about this physics. It's very exciting result. So what we have been doing in, in 2011, we basically proposed that uh, we could do that measurement of the uh, weather wind and ground spin. Just look at the yes, digest. So <coughs> the, in this process, actually, you probe this sort of weather wind and ground distribution, and that uh, would be, in, in my view, is actually one of the golden channels at the EIC because the direct proof of the weather wind and ground distribution. And also, I, my statement that this actually is not really manifest in the sense that in QED you don't have this at all. And this factorization is very clear because as there has been many discussion about TMD factoring breaking for the jet physics, but for this process, I try to factor it's very sorry. And we have uh, uh, many different channels actually. You can look at every flavor or so you can use real water photon. Anyway. So one of, the, uh, one of the other exciting development is like uh, also realized by Andreas and Jen Zhou uh, 2011 is that actually if you look at small x ground distribution, there's one particular so-called linear polarized ground distribution that is also very interesting. Uh, in particular for the dipole, uh, it's almost like small x, almost 100% linear polarized. But for weather winning ground space, not that the polarized, but still you have significant correlation. This is a comparison of the linear polarized ground distribution and, uh, and it just being uh, as a symmetric uh, ground. <coughs> you can say that actually they have uh, quite a uh, quite, uh, spin asymmetry and small x. And uh, uh, Adrian and Paulus and uh, uh, <coughs> uh, Wistop, uh, Skokoff actually wrote a paper recently tried to say that we can do this measurement at, uh, at the EIC. So I just, I, I, spend, uh, I want to spend a couple of minutes to explain what they are doing. So in the, in the dieted uh, product in, in the EIC process, you have K1 and K2 at the CGS moment. Uh, and then you look at the total transfer moment of the K1 and K2, so they call Cooper. And then you're looking for the azimuth uh, angular correlation between Cooper and one of the leading jet uh, capers, that's uh, they define, because the linear polarized ground spin will give you so called cosine 2 phi. So they call it way 2 actually asymmetry. So from, from what they calculate that, if they at the EIC, actually you, you can <coughs> see significant cosine 2 phi asymmetry if you're looking for this correlation between pupil and the paper. So that's, uh, I think, it's a very exciting result. I think uh, should be, uh, I think we should. We should uh, thinking forward to write really for the realistic estimates how this actually will happen in the, in the EIC. So, yeah. so the fact that they call it V2 is not to be considered. It's not a way to inhale, yeah. yeah. It's, it's not, not a way to inhale, right? Yeah. But it's, it's just cosine 2 pi. Just cosine 2 pi. Yeah, but it's just different. Yeah. And that's the cosine way to determine the jet. At least the digest system is not multi-particle. No, 
Not at all. Correlation which is not at all. Not at all. It's different from what Raju was talking about and yeah. also Chang Yong can talk about. So uh, <coughs> I I do want to spend a couple of minutes on the on the QCD erosion for the uh, for the small X M D and uh, and and uh, uh, so this uh, couple slides really for Raju. <coughs> Although you, you, you have heard about this, I just want to <coughs> reassure that everything is, uh, is consistent. So we took uh, the simple example, <coughs> this is like five years ago. Uh, <coughs> that's when our or when I really back and forth talk about, uh, discuss many, many, many concepts. So we take uh, the simplest process. I mean, I did that many years ago when he actually started that in 1994. He uses this so called scalar, scalar current. Yuri was on later packet than uh, 89, I think, was his paper. 1994, he had the uh, extreme result. But that's what I want to talk about. He was talking about actual ground <laughs> radiation as well. So he, he, he basically did, did a wonderful calculation for the scalar current interaction with the grounds. So he derived the DFK. Yeah, but I think it was 1990. 1990? 1994. I think that's a nice anyway, that's right. <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> and your paper is 98. Okay, that's before you read. <laughs> so, before you <laughs> So, we, we took a simple example, Higgs particle production, because that's really popular from, through the effective therapy. And uh, you can immediately write a leading order cross section, the differential cross section. This TMD people know, guys know what I'm talking about. So if you look at the differential cross independent transfer of momenta, linear order just give you TMD ground switch. In small act, that's just a wiser winning ground switch. Of course, the incoming ground also has an integral ground switch in there. So wiser winning ground switch is also called quasi-poor in small acts because in what, four version nines, of course, uh, with the development as well. So we did the explicit, explicit one loop calculation. We have ground radiation and real diagram, <coughs> virtual diagram. And what we found that the, when you calculate everything together, you found a collinear diagram, of course, because the incoming ground we treat it as a collinear object. And in addition, you also have small x divergence. So this small x divergence actually really kind of gym work, a DK type of evolution for the wise and winning ground description, positive pole joint description. It's actually D C over C, that's really rapid divergence. And the curve actually exactly the same as what uh, Roger mentioned during his talk by Fabio and Stefan and Al and, and uh, Owen. So, since you mentioned this, is that, so, so I mean, your, 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 your diagrams in the table, hoops and so on, I mean, so mm -hmm. they're dress propagators, right? Yeah. So what, what is the form of the dress propagator that you use? Um, which activator for you? I mean, so for example, if I just look at diagram A, right? Diagram A, this one? On the, on the right. On the right. Oh, this one? Yeah. This so, one? Yeah, so that's a dress property. Oh, that one. That's yeah. a, this one actually is very easy. It's a simple yeah. diagram. I understand, but it's a dress property. Right? It, you, 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 you normalize that, and then you get, like, you get basically, we take the Nikon gauge calculation. So you have like considered IP in this diagram as well. No, no, that's what we're talking about. So what I'm saying yeah. is that you know the, the multiple interaction happens after the tracing. So what's what are you doing? No, why can't you have multiple that, that, then that's this type. Okay. So, so, okay. so, so if you calculate the interaction where you have the ground loop, it's a little different from what you calculate here. Yeah. This one is very simple. It's like a separate interaction. So the so, so, so I mean yeah, I don't need to get technical. Oh, sure. I mean, so there's a contribution. The multiple scatterings we do on loop don't affect the needle versions necessarily, but there's a finite piece that you get. Oh, yeah. which would depend on multiple scattering. Yes, yes, yes. So everything there. Everything yeah. there. But, but then, what's the form of the dress propagator? Uh, I can't show you. That. Okay. But so, so it, 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 so it's a it's beautiful in the sense that if you take a dynamic. For example, if you take a linear limit, your 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 cross section or your distribution <coughs> just reduce to the leading order with splitting curve. And if you take the, the soft ground limit or repeated divergence part, your very complicated dipole, six topo, whatever, 
just collapse to, uh, to, uh, to weather winning the situation again, so you get this uh, kernel. So it's, a, it's, a, it's beautiful, actually. I mean, of course, at the beginning, we, we, we didn't know actually we were a discipline. In particular, I remember I will try to really play advocate that so they say that, uh, I mean, suppose I already have the sugar crop in the decay. I mean, he, he, he argued with us for, for many months. So we spend time fighting and folks really convinced ourselves that we do have physics of so both have a resubmission. So reason is the following. So suppose I decompose my radiative ground moment in terms of the pseudocode so decomposition. One is parallel to the T1 incoming nuclear and one parallel to the nucleus. And then you have transfer the moment. <laughs> so the pseudocode resubmission, the TMD resubmission is really talking about the upper beta is much smaller, so, so soft ground. And for incoming ground, so that's linear, so alpha acting for one, and beta is much smaller than one, so that's a linear ground in, incoming. But the small x really dealing with, I mean, after this exercise, I, I have a better understanding about small x. So small x collinear ground is actually one minus beta much smaller than one, and, but alpha actually exactly goes to zero. So that sometimes confuses this with soft ground, but, but they, they are in particular kind of matter that one minus beta is much smaller. So that gives you that data. Anyway, so what, once you subtract the divergent for the linear and small x, you get one new phase out, and of course you find double logs. So this double logs in particular for the coming from pseudocode with TMD evolution. And once you do the resummation, you, you can write on very simple formula. I mean, if you're familiar with TMD, it's very simple. And then you have pseudocode resummation form factor, and then you have a non-privy part, we now call it a small x, one the William Brown solution, which doesn't have any sort of effects at all, only have PK effects. And then you have incoming ground distribution, which have a say, also a linear contribution, and upper squared. That's it. So that's the final contribution. Uh, if you are really interested, on, so that's the final contribution. So in this TMD element, you get a very simple result. Everything <coughs> is consistent. So this, uh, we can generate that to any hard process in, in this paper will particularly deal with the digital production. Of course, digital is so complicated. And what Raju mentioned in his talk, I mean, we, we didn't do complete calculation, but we, we did check the divergence part. We did have collinear divergence and rapid divergence and circle summation. I think that has been checked uh, consistently. And then we can write down any hard process, for you know, your hard scale, transfer the moment, the jet transfer the moment, and the total transfer the moment uh, can be written in this way. You have pseudocode resummation, and then you have a non perturbative group for I hope one is going, whatever one is going here, and then this is going to be perturbative. So I think that's, uh, I'm now <coughs> much more confident to talk about this. And uh, this can, <coughs> sorry, could, could you, uh, so this is the cross section, this is a, uh, or, or uh, <coughs> this uh, and yeah, yeah, you could do well. no, I mean, what So, the so the PT here in particular in this paper were dealing with basically digest process. So this is a digest. Digest and uh, <laughs> the GF transfer moment is much larger than negative, like there to see like 100 GB jet or, or 50 GB jet, right? But the total transfer of the moon jet, digest is very small. So that's what we were trying to understand. The so, so K perp is a small and then P is a large. Yes. And this could be Jerryan as well. So then the, then the P perp will be useful. But so if you have a, a, a two jets uh, near the back to back? Yes. Yeah. So it is the classic uh, factorization breaking region. Yes. Yes. You don't yeah. care, you say, I go ahead, I don't care about that, or you do care about that? I do care, but I just argue that in the Fortuary region, the population breaking effect, we have an average cubic, so I can forget about that for the moment. And second reason that we are only looking at linear number logs. So it, I will mention that later. So, so the, I hope this can be continued. I mean, we are working the leading double log 
uh, with some agent from Sudacom. If you go beyond that, actually, there's a, there's a certain issue I don't know how to handle. I'll maybe mention about that. Okay, so, so <coughs> a couple of years ago, and Jen Zhou and the Bo and I, myself, actually tried to look into the TMD. As well. I mean, we are doing essentially the cross section calculation for hips product production, digestive production. We are saying that why not we just look into TMD card distribution, ground distribution. So, so what, what we propose is that we start with the factorized TMD with full operator definition and call it super did 1981. And then we calculate higher the corrections and the in the back of the with product <coughs> subtraction. If you, you're familiar with TMD, we have to do the icon singularity subtraction. And then we solve the TMD evolution with BK or with the dipole ground distribution and so on. So that's the Collins 2011 uh, prescription for TMD. So you have unsubtract ground, uh, ground uh, power distribution, and then you have subtract with singularity. And that's a subtract with ground distribution. So this will be, uh, if I have small axis, will be. And I can normally define the weather gradient ground description or dipole <coughs> ground description. And but when you really do a perturbative calculation, you find that you have a subtract of the collinear uh, and then icon of endpoints in the IP, and then you get the energy dependence that you have a TMD or whatever. So TMD evolution, yeah, here is actually some very subtle issue. So TMD evolution will follow Collins 2011 with resummation. This actually doesn't depend on skin, so if you change the different skin, you get a different result. But one thing is that beta zero is missing. So for good reason, actually, because uh, uh, the, the beta zero is coming from uh, the UV behavior of the integral one description. But in the small x, BK evolution, they don't have the UV behavior. So beta zero is not zero, it's understandable. And also the running effects uh, in the BK evolution totally different. So, so that's why in, in this so far, we don't have better zero in this pseudocode resummation. But on the other hand, a small x evolution for square and the BK evolution. But I put the BK for weather wing and the steam work to accomplish the evolution effects. So to answer your question, because the better zero turn is missing, so actually go beyond the end of law, there will be some issue. So this, uh, so I, I, I don't have any solution right now. But we had a discussion a couple of weeks ago on this. So that would be final answer. For example, if you have any TMD ground description, I call a weather winning ground description, and it de depends on X and transfer the moment, it depends on the factorization scale, and then you write down the resummation result will be, now you have pseudo of resummation facts, and then you have small X evolution Anyway, so I just want to show you that we did calculate everything. <coughs> so we just not, you know, listen, I got last comments said that you, you guys just postulate. No, we did calculation. Okay, we really uh, tough calculation. Anyway, so now I turn to the TMD card description. Uh, this is a long story, and Larry and Roger did this calculation. Okay. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, 1998, and so I think I also did a uh, card description uh, around the same time. And we actually tried to reproduce that calculation, you know, try to put it in the TMD context, uh, like uh, almost 10 years ago, uh, by Siri and Bowen and myself. So this TMD card description is actually, and one thing we were at that time really trying to stress that, that the, the TMD card description, we got it First, in the in the so-called cities, some include the DS. We argue that this is actually universal. So Kazu helped me to actually plot what this uh, TMD uh, clock display would be look like. Um, so here is a Fourier transfer into the B space. Uh, basically, you, you get the TMD clock display in here. It's very complicated. And then you have to do the gradual Fourier transfer in the B space. And then you, you look at the different X. So this, uh, he also have different curves. Uh, the 39 is the running coupling BK, and dash and I just simple GBW model. So you see the difference, and also you see the X dependence and so on. 
so this you very uh, uh, crude understanding about how the TMT quark distribution and small x actually from this problem you can see. And of course, you can also compare to what the TMT community knows. I just give you one example from our recent phase for the Duryan process I mentioned during uh, our root talk yesterday. And uh, I mean, there's many other group are working on. I know today uh, another talk on the TMB. But here is what we fit to the Duryan data and the Z boson from Paratron. And what we got the clock distribution is like this. So you can clearly see there's a difference between these two, um, of course. And also a uh, different X. So the X dependence in the TMB normally transition global phase of the TMB is really coming from the ground speed because the clock distribution, I just, I didn't, I, I just small X was, was dominated by the ground speed distribution, which has been built in in the TMB generation <coughs> formula. So that's how you get this uh, different behavior for the TMP power distribution and so on. And of course, this one thing we can actually, with the EIC data, we can tell which one is good, which one is not good. And, uh, and uh, maybe I just skip this part. Could so say again, what are the different curves in the clock? Uh, so the, uh, and the current code is the same. So this will be, let me say, so bright curve is the x equal 10 to minus 2. So this one is 10 to minus 3, 10 to minus 4. And, and so those are the, what is the SI? Oh, this is our fate. Our fate in 2014. OK. It's, so uh, it's basically updated beyond the my fate. So it's, uh, it's clear. So uh, we kind of update the own my. So Nadowski is the fate. Always oh, be going, and in their field, there's a certain issue that I complain about uh, during Haru's talk as well. So they, they can go to high kills for anyway. So there's a certain issue about that. So we update that field and the one. Okay, so that's just coming purely from yeah, yes, I understand. So if you take some superposition of curves on the left, you may get the curve curves on the right. I don't know. <laughs> Okay, anyway. You just know your, 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 you, you're talking about this? What is this one? Yeah, I don't know. It's just coming from the numerics. So we have a TMD vibration, we have TMD global phase. That's what we got. <coughs> so, and then he tell you why. So, if you, uh, oh, sorry, if you look at the data, so what we have data is very end data, safe timing experiment, and Q score about 20 or above. But X is uh, in the motor X. There's no small X car distribution. So actually, we cannot uh, constrain small X car distribution at all. So in our fate, we assume this small X administration. We found the parameter is zero. So it's consistent with no small X. That's part of the reason I actually tried. I was very excited to hear that Phoenix, I have this Julian data. I thought maybe I can constrain small X. But no, actually, I mean just just plugging my curve with this bit without small x effects is just perfect. So, so they, it's not saying that there's no physics here. It's just because the uncertainty, the error is still big. So we cannot say anything about it. So we definitely need more data on small x region. TP. Okay. So anyway, so at EIC, what we can do. So we can do the sum equals BS and small x, right? <coughs> so Q score here, I mean, this process uh, has been discussed many, many times in the, in the TMD community. You have Q score, you have transpose moment in the final state, and we are interested in the kinematics as Q is much larger such a scale, much larger than transpose momenta. The TMD factor can make sense. So we are talking about HERA. There's an implication from HERA. 
So this is one of the H1 data. I took it from their publication. And you can plot the ratio. So this is the ratio between different x of the differential cross-section and the function transfer of momenta. So at that time, I think this is still when we when work with, uh, uh, calculate this process with Sir McCrabb 10 years ago. We just compare the ratio. This is purely, I think, the GBW model prediction, and this is data. I mean, Harry is a fantastic machine. The only problem is that we don't have really precise data for this kind of observable. So we are recently trying to look back for the most higher data, try to see what we can learn from it. But uh, someone we are not really motivated because the, the error of higher data is, is kind of forbid us to any, get any sensible re, uh, result. <coughs> so sure, what the ESC can offer, I think it's a precise, detailed mapping of the core distribution and small air. That's <coughs> what we need. Let me just look at the comparison between small X and what the TMD global field gives you. Then you really need the precise data and the detail. And also, I think at that time, I believe the TMD fragmentation, although we're contrary to some yes, what you will answer, right? Okay, from JLAB together with, uh, with Bell and so on, Bell too, right? And in particular, I want to emphasize EA collision will provide uh, very important information on Euclidean multiplication. That will actually separation uh, make much sense, or much better sense. So the BK evolution will become more evident. So last minute, this similarity you can do the ground TMD. Here I just want to show you that uh, the, uh, in the paper by Bowen and Eka and other people that they did take into account pseudocode. So the pseudocopy information uh, contribution will change your behavior, but one thing they don't change is that comparison between EA and EP. So that's very important. So short summary, uh, I believe the theory development in the last uh, uh, five or year uh, really provides solid ground start TMB and small x. We're really looking for new data. So strat strategy forward, I in my view is that we can establish a case for TMD and small x as a first step, because I think TMD is really a common language with high-level the community and small x community. And we know actually better about the theoretical uncertainties and whatever. And then we can extend to the GPD and DVCS and small x. I don't have time to talk about it, but that, that will be definitely one thing we can do. And the, the, the advantage is that it will Tons of data with the ESA outcome. Right. We already will have tons of data from JMAC for the, for the moderator logic, but a small X, definitely, yes, we, we provide tons of data. And uh, uh, Andreas will talk about it, already talked about it yesterday. The extended weekly description will be our great for our UPM tomography event. And uh, that's it. Maybe I'll stop here. Although I prepared the, the last couple of slides all the time, but I didn't get a chance to talk about it. I already gave three talks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, too many already, but um, if if um, is there an easy way to understand how your form factor factorizes from small x evolution? I mean, in principle. If I were just thinking about it a priori, I would think, okay, if I want to sum double logs of Q squared and logs 1 over x, I have to write one big complicated evolution equation, which does both. But for you, it's, at least at this order, it doesn't happen on the factor, guys. They're just separate. I mean, of course, Raju used to argue with me that your pseudocopy effect is obvious correction, so we just forget about it. <laughs> well, a small x and low Q squared it is, but. But uh, we have large kids for you. I guess let me ask my question this way. Suppose my, I modify my small x evolution to include terms which uh, have logs squared of the dipole size included. Then after I integrate over the dipole sizes, would this become log squared of kt or log squared of kt? Logs from kt. KT that's, the, that's the true ek. 
I mean, there also you have two scale. One is the catch one is three catch one. Yeah. 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 general comment that I think uh, your uh, approach to combine <coughs> uh, small X evolution and, and pseudo-cophysics um, as an analog uh, in, in the uh, old fashioned CCFM. At least, uh, if you, of course, if you leave out uh, the separation parts, which for you is essential. If you, if you replace BK by BFK, I think CCFM, uh, I think, uh, uh, corresponds uh, to, to the spirit of combining pseudo logs and uh, small x. Uh, yeah. uh, I have perhaps a, 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 a question. Um, uh, I think neither CCFM nor what you describe, uh, I think uh, really, at, 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 as far as I can see, address the question of uh, um, the coefficient function, uh, or what I've called in this uh, SCAP framework, they call the matching coefficient, which appear when you do TND factorization. Is that correct? So, in other words, if you do a TMD factorization, the column is over its term on that way. You have the pseudo factor, yes. and you have uh, coefficient functions mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. uh, in front of the pseudo mm -hmm. which have a perturbative expansion. Mm -hmm. Those coefficient functions at sufficiently high order develop uh, small x logarithms. You don't see them at leading next to leading. And Perhaps also not the next to next. I actually, I mean, this is the impact factor of that. Right? And so, in this example I gave yesterday, <coughs> you see already a next to leading. You see not all next to next. No, these are not impact factors. Oh, so you're not covering these are not impact factors. Impact. So I don't understand. These are not impact factors. These are the matching coefficient uh, of the. Okay, yeah. I, I maybe it gets the technical. No, no, it's not technical. Actually, the, the, everything is in here. Everything is new. Um, so you, no, but, but for the wrong case, it's very simple at this order. But, but for the crop, you could have that too. So here I have the leading order cross section, right? And then you have the integral ground stream from incoming both bound, which will have matching coefficients. But for the ground, it's very simple because the third function is the leading order, and next leading order, there are also there. I, I think maybe if I could make a comment. Just to, to, to reach, maybe I think <coughs> what they have is a bit of an easy coefficient. So, what they would call a coefficient function doesn't prove very low x, it's limited in x to, to, uh, in a very narrow age to a range. So, even if they have logs of x, it would be very, very small logs. Um, All the small x logs are sitting in this quantity. Okay, okay. So <laughs> maybe the issue though it is this different one. Uh, if, what accuracy do you have in the log of uh, uh, m squared over qt squared? So, say, <laughs> where, where if the radian, radian mass is that's, m. That's and, and a very m. good question. So, because the, because the, the, the coefficient functions I'm talking about are just one if you are leading I understand. in those logs. I understand. Right? Yeah, so, I they're understand. just one. I'm, I'm, TM, I'm a TMD guy, so I know what you're talking yeah. about. So, because the beta zero issue, I don't know. Right now, I'm only looking at the median of Be because beta zero is in next median of So, okay. if we solve the beta zero issue, I don't know if the variable will breach the small x part and bring the beta zero consistent with only super sternmap, I can go to the next median of I think beyond next median of nobody knows what happens. That's a very good question. Trying to understand better your conclusion from your curves. So, in this space, uh, uh, what are the assumptions? I mean, there's not that much data there. Uh, <laughs> that's true. No much data. That's that's exactly my point. We need more data. So, you probably we need a small flavor dependence or anything. They have flavor. Actually, that's uh, I want to I want to talk to you because they have the 
you, you know, this is the PA, the PA. So they have neutron. <coughs> they don't say much. Yeah, we can talk in detail. Yeah. Okay, anyway, so I think I still have one minute. Maybe I just go to my prepared backwards. Yeah, right <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so more recently we were trying to understand the, the sugar call for the more exclusive process. So I, I was uh, I was excited to see this data reported by Steve Stanford uh, the park manager. What they're looking for? They're looking for the QE process in the MRI collision when you have photon photon scattering and produce dilaton, and they measure what I was interested in that case. So they measure the so-called uh, the azimuth angle uh, decoloration, right? And uh, they have built up the data. So what I'm trying to, in the, in the last couple of months, I was trying to really understand the circle in QE. So this is a really interesting project. How and, and myself and Bowen were really back and forth many times. I think now we agree that the circle is kind of a complicated in this case, in the key. And it depends on the transfer of the moment, actually. When you transfer the moment, uh, you do much or not in the left mass, you get a double arc. But if the tensor is smaller than that one, mass, you only get a single arm. So anyway, so the beautiful thing I just want to mention is following. So, you know, I mean, we there's a couple of TMD guys here, and when we when we do TMD resummation or TMD evolution, we always dream of to separate different communities. So here, here you get it. So if you look at this this uh, plot compared with different contributions. So this will be per module two photon contribution. That would be TMB language intrinsic transfer of the contribution. And then you have perturbative contribution, basically just one photon radiation, right? That contribution not transfer. <coughs> and in between, although this small window, we have the pseudocorp resummation. But pseudocorp resummation will actually really give you a perfect match or smooth match between the Intrinsic transfer moment description and for the big time. I think for that reason, I think this is a really beautiful case for TMD actually. And I'm very happy. I, I talked to one of our son two weeks ago. He was happy too. And here is uh, our theory calculation compared with the other state. Just perfect. Anyway, this is all the period? Yes, this is all perfect. And I was mentioned yesterday and also talked to Rick this morning that this can be generated to the de facto process as well. Because the de facto process, you only have color sensitive can here. So the ground radiation actually would be limited if you started this idea. So we can hack that actually. And we're in the process, I talked to Yush Takata as well. And uh, in particular for, for this experiment, they are looking for nuclear fire. They are looking in the very low transfer <coughs> moment region where you have coherent diffractive process. So that's what I was trying to make the point yesterday. Is that if I if I limit myself in the very low transfer momenta and forget about this tail, then we we'll purely look at diffractive process. So this transfer moment is a total transfer of the digestive system. This is the data where they also show uh, essentially believe that she called transfer. Yes. So that's cool then. That you can yes. describe that. Yes. Yes. Just from my previous slide. So this one? Yeah. So what's the red dash? Because I mean you see this two <coughs> two structures, right? So you have the low So this is a this is a just uh, that uh, Spencer's star line prediction. So this is the dash curve, blue curve. So that cannot really go to large transfer the moment. So is that? But that's not nothing to do with diffraction, right? So it's, it's just uh, <laughs> no, it's nothing. This is QED. Yes, it's QED. So this is QED. So what's this? So where does that come from? What do you mean by primordial? Primordial because you have uh, wide angle green and photon, right? That will have transfer. Oh, I see. Okay. So that's in the star map. Okay. Oh, Jackson's. Book. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But when you have photon radiation, you do damage. Right. So you're you're calculating this part. Uh, probability part and also with summation part. So this will be final rhythm with solid curve, also solid curve. But 
but the what I'm confused about is that the primordial and resummation at low at low uh, PT are right on top of each other. So, yes. that, so does it mean that the resummation is negligible at low PT or how yes, do, okay. it's a negligible. And so so that so when you compare the data, <coughs> then the low PT part is entirely from the primordial. You don't need so okay, you don't need so so you really see the effects only at uh, yes. Device. Yes. But that's the beauty of this, right? I mean, we, we are trained on to get the intrinsic transfer for many, for many years, right? What Aruto was talking about 10, 20 years ago, it's really interesting page. But later when we realize we have to have the TMD evolution, so feedback, that means everything. Otherwise, we will have beautiful data. But here, they do. They do have clinical separation. So sorry to ask one more question. So we just have one of these So. You looked at the perturbative results of very low PT. Mm -hmm. right? That's divergent. Yeah, right. So when you add the primordial, are you adding that to the primordial to get the result there? And how, how do you understand that? Okay, that's a pseudopod. So when you have pseudopod, we basically bring the real and the virtual together. Okay. You have beautiful perception to the <coughs> That's a beautiful situation. I mean, you can perform also as well, but no, we, we just was asking a very naive question. Yeah. Right? So the, the, the blue dash curve is primordial, right? Yes. So, so the dash curve, so the red dash curve is diverging. So that's a probability calculation. Okay. And no transform, and you don't transfer your calculation. So you're, you're cutting that off. No, you don't cut off. Wait, so you, when, you perform the resummation. Okay. So when you, but, but the resummation is giving you almost no result, basically. No, so starting to, only in the, this region they are consistent with the probability calculation. But right. no PT, they do have this <clears> summation. <throat> so that's how you get this solid curve. That's how you get a pseudocode. Right. But the, but the solid curve is, is overwhelmed by the primordial curve, right? Overwhelming, that's because, right. yeah. that's because once you do the summation, the probability really can, R4 is very small. 